Good morning, students. In previous class, we solved the problems on the cycle of subcooling, subcooling after condensation. Isn't it? What is meant by a subcooling first? Subcooling is the process of reducing the temperature below the saturation temperature of the refrigerant. Clear? The subcooling process is done after the condensation before expansion wall. So what is the advantages of subcooling? Subcooling is the major effect on the COP. It is the major factor which affects the COP, that is the performance of the VCR system. Whenever the subcooling sub occurs, the subcooling process increases the refrigeration effect without changing the work input. Thereby, the COP of the system can be increased. Due to the subcooling process, the expansion, after expansion, the uh, state of the refrigerant, in the state of the refrigerant, the liquid part of the liquid part is more than the vapor part. That liquid part is very useful in the evaporator to absorb the heat to increase the refrigeration effect. So in this class, I'm going to solve some more problems. That is the, uh, the two problems on the subcooling cycle. Let us go for the third example. In a 15 TR, that is a ton of refrigeration, ammonia refrigeration plant is the ammonia is the refrigerant working fluid. The condensing temperature is at 25 degrees centigrade and evaporating temperature is at minus 10 degrees centigrade. These are the operating temperatures. Uh, the refrigerant is subcooled is subcooled by 5 degrees centigrade before passing through the total wall. That is a uh, degree of subcooling is given as 5 degrees centigrade. This is a temperature difference between saturation and subcooled liquid is 5 degrees centigrade. The vapor leaving the evaporator is 0.97 dry. Vapor leaving the evaporator meets here, the point is 1. At one, the dryness fraction is 0.97. That means the one point before compression process, the condition, the state of the refrigerant is in wet region because 97% percent is only dry, uh, remaining is wet. Uh, find the COP first bit and second bit is the power required. It is a small problem. In this, use the following property of ammonia, properties of ammonia. These are the properties of ammonia. Uh, you have to take the properties of ammonia at 25 and minus 2 from the data book. You have to extract this table from the data book uh, for the ammonia refrigerant. Clear? Go to the ammonia refrigerant page and take the properties at 25 and minus 10 degrees centigrade, the different properties that is enthalpy, entropy, and specific heat. Because the specific heat is also you have to take because specific heat is not given in the problem. Uh, after getting, after taking the uh, properties from the data book, you have to write down the data which is given in the problem and the data table. Uh, the, in the data, uh, the problem in the problem, the uh, refrigeration effect is given as 15 tons of refrigeration. It is 15 TR, it is, which is taken as Q, and the operating temperatures. That is the highest temperature condenser operating temperature is 25 is given, and uh, Evaporator operating temperature is given as minus 10 degrees centigrade or 263 kelvins, it is 298 kelvins. And T3, it is the subcooled liquid temperature, uh, which is reduced by 5 degrees centigrade. Therefore, whenever the condenser temperature operating temperature is 25, the subcooled liquid temperature is 5 less than this condenser operating temperature. Therefore, 25 minus 5, that is 20 degrees centigrade. That means that liquid leaving the condenser at 20 degrees centigrade at 293 kelvins. The X1 is the dryness fraction before compression or after evaporator is 0 0.97 X1. Uh, this, this data up till this uh, X1, the data is given in the problem. And from this data onwards, you have to take the properties, <coughs> have to take the data from the data table. That is HF3 dash. 
HF3 dash means this is a TS diagram and pH diagram. HF3 dash means is a saturation property. Two dash is a saturation property. One is saturation property of one dash. This one dash, two dash, three dash can be taken from the data table directly. Uh, HF3 dash means the liquid enthalpy. This is the liquid line, which is on the liquid line. The liquid enthalpy, this is the liquid enthalpy at higher temperature or higher pressure. This is the condenser operating temperature. At the condenser operating temperature, how to take the liquid enthalpy. That is HF3 dash, clear? So HF3 dash is, Uh, 298.9 kilojoules per kg. HF3 dash means it's a condenser operating temperature. Liquid enthalpy is 298.9. Similarly, H2 dash. H2 dash is the vapor enthalpy. Here. H2 dash here. Uh, yeah, that, uh, the, uh, the two dash point is the saturation vapor line. It is the saturation vapor enthalpy at condenser operating, operating temperature. 25 degrees centigrade uh, vapor enthalpy is 1465.84. This is H2 dash. And similarly, SF3 dash and SSG2 dash. SF3 dash means the liquid enthalpy at a uh, condenser operating temperature, that is 1.1242. And SG2 dash or S2 dash, directly it, uh, it is also at operating temperature, condenser operating temperature, vapor enthalpy. Two dash is on uh, vapor side and three dash is on liquid side. So you have to take the vapor enthalpy at the condenser operating temperature, vapor entropy, 5.0391. And specific heat of liquid, specific heat of liquid is 4.6 at uh, condenser operating temperature. Specific heat of vapors is 2.8 kilojoules per kg Kelvin at the same operating temperature. HF1, this is a liquid enthalpy at uh, evaporator operating temperature, at, that is minus 10 at minus 10, uh, liquid enthalpy is 135.37. H1 dash, that is H1 dash is, one dash is on the saturation vapor line. So you have to take the vapor enthalpy at uh, uh, minus 10 degrees centigrade. Minus 10 degrees centigrade vapor enthalpy is 1433.05. Uh, the similar parameter for the entropies, SF1, that is a liquid enthalpy at minus 10 and SG1, vapor enthalpy at minus 10. So vapor entropy, these are the entropies, liquid entropy and vapor entropy at minus 10 degrees centigrade, 0.5443, 5.4770 or the entropy values at minus 10 degrees centigrade. This is the data given in the data table and their problem. And we have to find the COP in the problem and power required. If you want to find the COP, you should find the first enthalpy at each point. Enthalpy at one for compression enthalpy after compression and enthalpy after condensation, uh, which is equal to the uh, enthalpy after expansion, H3 equal to H4 or HF3 equal to H4. Clear? Uh, here are written H2, this value, it is H2 dash, H1 dash, this one, H3 dash, HF3 dash and HF3, this is the HF1. This point is HF1 because it is in uh, lower temperature liquid enthalpy. Clear? So after getting all the enthalpy, then only we can proceed the problem. To find the enthalpy at each point, let us start with point one. We know that the entropy at point one. How to find the entropy? Uh, a, it is in dry side, sorry, wet region. It is in wet region. How to say it? It's a wet, wet region, one point. The dryness fraction is given as 97 percentage, that is 0.97 at this place. So the one is in wet region. Because the dryness fraction is less than one, it is in wet region. Uh, S1 equal to SF1 plus X1 into SF1. It is a formula to calculate the entropy when the state of the refrigerant is in wet region. Clear? Yeah. SF1 plus X1 into SG1 minus SF1. That is equal to SFG1. Okay, SFG1 can be I rewrite as SG1 minus SF1. Vapor ent entropy minus liquid entropy is equal to the change in entropy, SFG1. So SF1 is from the data table 0 0.5443 plus X1 is given as 0 0.97 and SG1 
is a vapor enthalpy at lower temperature is 5.4770 minus 0.5443 is SF1. After substituting a substitution of all the parameters, we will get 5.329 kilojoules per kg Kelvin is the entropy at this point, point 0.1. Clear? After getting the entropy, it can be equated to the entropy at point two because it is an isentropic process. During isentropic process, the entropy remains constant, S1 equal to S2. So S1, uh, how to write the S2? It is in superheated state. When the state of the refrigerant is in superheated region, uh, how to write the entropy formula? Entropy formula, entropy is at point two is equal to, S2 is equal to S2 dash, that is a saturation entropy plus specific heat of vapors during this process uh, into log of T superheated by T saturation, that is T2 by T2 dash. When the state of the refrigerant is superheated region, we can use this formula to calculate the entropy. So S2 dash, that is the vapor entropy at 298 kelvins. Vapor entropy at 298. What is 298? That is a condenser operating temperature to 25 degrees centigrade. At that particular 25 degrees centigrade, uh, S2 dash is the vapor entropy 5.0391 plus 2.8 is the specific heat of vapors. Specific heat of vapor is 25 to 98 Kelvin, is 2.8 kilo, kilojoules per kg Kelvin into log of T2 is the uh, superheated temperature. We have to find the temperature, the, the temperature, and T2 dash is the saturation temperature, which is given as 25 degrees centigrade or 298 Kelvin. So let us take this equation two. This is the S2 value. This is the S1 value. By equating these two, because S1 equal to S2, uh, by equating the above two equations, equation one and equation two, 5.329 is equal to 5.0391 plus 2.8 into log of T2 by 298. Uh, after equating these two uh, equations, we will get a log T2 by T1 by T2 by 298 is equal to 1.109. How to get it is 5.329 minus 5.0391 divided by 2.82 into log of T2 by 298 or log of T2 by 298 is equal to this value is 0 0.1035. By taking the anti-logs on both sides, we will get T2 by 298, and this is the two T2 by 298, after cancelling the log, uh, we can write the E power 0 0.1035 on the left side. Please write in the right side in the next step, E power 0 0.1035 is equal to 1.109. From this, we, can, we will get temperature after Compression that is a superheated temperature has 330 kelvins. Clear students? T2 is 330 kelvins. After getting the T2, we can find the enthalpies at each point of the cycle. <clears throat> we know that the enthalpy at point one, one is in wet region. If it is wet region, we can use this formula to calculate the enthalpy. H1 equal to HF1 plus X1 into HF G1. H of one is the vapor enthalpy at lower temperature that is 135.37 and the X one is the rate fraction at point one is 0.97. H of G one is right as H G one minus H of one. Is the vapor enthalpy at minus 10, liquid enthalpy at minus 10. These are given in the data table, 433.05 minus 135.37. We will get enthalpy at point one before compression, 1394.12 kilojoules per kg. Here, this is the H1. After getting the H1, enthalpy at point two. How to find the enthalpy at point two? Enthalpy point two is H2 equal to, because it is in superheated region. When it is superheated region, we can find the enthalpy by using this formula. That is H2 equal to saturation enthalpy at the particular temperature, that is H2 dash plus sensible heat. Here, H2 equal to, at this point, enthalpy is equal to H2 dash, up to this, the enthalpy is H2 dash, and plus this much amount of heat. This heat, this much of amount of heat represents the sensible heat. So specific heat into change in temperature or a degree of superheat. So specific heat into degree of superheat or change in temperature, H2 dash plus CPV into T2 minus T2 dash is the degree of superheat, T superheated minus T saturation. 
So H2 dash, what is H2 dash? It's the vapor enthalpy at 25 degrees centigrade, 1465.84 plus specific heat of vapors given as 2.8. T2 is 330, we find here. And T2 dash is 298, is the saturation temperature, 25 degrees centigrade at 298. We will get H2 value as 1555.44 kilojoules per kg. So H1, H2 already find. And we want to find a next parameter H1, H of the H1, H2, we have to find the H3. After subcooling, what is the enthalpy? Enthalpy of liquid refrigerant at 0.3. How to get the enthalpy of subcool liquid? The, if we know the enthalpy at this point, uh, by subtracting that H3 dash, H of 3 dash, uh, minus the sensible heat. This much of uh, sensible heat is rejecting during the uh, condensation or cooling process in the condenser. So this is the subcooling process. The temperature is decreasing during temperature decrement, sensible heat will be rejected from the refrigerant. So how much sensible heat is rejecting from three dash to three? That is specific heat of liquid it is a liquid state, specific heat of liquid into change in temperature during this process. That is T3 dash minus T3 or T saturation minus T subcool liquid, clear? So you have to subtract the enthalpy of saturation, enthalpy minus sensible heat, specific heat of liquid into degree of subcooling. So HF3 dash, that is the saturation enthalpy, that is a liquid enthalpy at 25, 298.9 given. Minus specific heat of liquid is given in the table, specific heat of liquid, that is 4.6 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. So 4.6 minus degree of subcooling is given as 5 degrees centigrade. This is the degree of subcooling. Refrigerant is subcooled by 5 degrees centigrade before passing through the throat wall is the degree of subcooling. So directly by substituting the 5 value here uh, into 5, 4.6 into 5, then we will get the 275.9 kilojoules per kg. Clear? This is the HF3 dash, HF3, which is also is equal to H4 because 3 is uh, equal to the 4 enthalpy, enthalpy at point 0.3 equal to enthalpy at point 0.4 due to isenthalpy process 3 to 4. So after getting H1, H2, HF3, we can find the CO2 coefficient of performance. H1 minus HF3 by H2 minus H1. This is a refrigeration effect across the evaporator and a work input across the compressor. There is a change in enthalpy across the compressor, change in enthalpy across the evaporator. H1 minus HF3 by H2 minus H1. So after substitution of all the parameters which are uh, found in the previous slide, then we will get COP. 6.93 is the COP we will get uh, coefficient of performance as 6.93. Dear students, like this, you have to find the enthalpies at each point, first of all. After getting the enthalpies, you can proceed the problem. Whatever the parameter which is asked in the problem, we can find by using the enthalpies. And second bit is power required. How much power is required during the compression process? Compression process is one to two. We know that H2 minus H1 is the work required per kg. For every one kg, we, we can find the uh, work required, but it's all power, power required in kilowatts. How to find the power required? We know that the heat extracted or rejecting effect produced, or refrigerating effect produced per kg of refrigerant. This is the numerator is refrigeration effect, H1 minus H of three we will get 1118.22 kilojoules per kg. For every kg, 1118.22 kilojoules of heat can be extracted by this system for every kg of refrigerant. But the refrigeration capacity of the system is given as 15 tons of refrigeration, isn't it? 15 tons of refrigeration. If it is converted into 15 to 210, 3150 kilojoules per minute, it is given in the problem. So 3150 kilojoules per minute. This is the refrigeration capacity. This is the refrigeration capacity per kg or refrigeration effect per kg. For every K one kg, this much of heat is extracting. Okay, for total uh, mass flow rate, if we can find the mass flow rate of the refrigerant, that is total mass flow rate into total refrigeration effect per kg is equal to total uh, refrigeration capacity. So mass flow rate into RE, RE is the per kg, 1118.22 is the 
वन केजी की इंत हीट एक्सट्राक्ट चुनाव सो मास् आफ मास् आफ रिफ्रिजरेंट एम आर अच्छे एम आर् इंटू आर इज द टोटल हीट एक्सट्राक्टेड बै दिस्टम विच इज ईक्वल टू द टोटल हीट कैपासीटी दट इज द रिफ्रिजरेशन कैपासीटी इज गिवन एज द प्रॉब्लम थ्री वन फाइव जीरो किलो जो पर् मिनट दे फोर एम आर इक्वल टू थ्री वन फाइव जीरो डिवेड बै ट्रिपल वन एट पॉइंट टू टू किलो जो पर् के therefore we will get the mass of refrigerant which is flowing in the system is 2.81 kJ per minute for every minute 2.81 kg of refrigerant that is ammonia is flowing across the every component of the system clear after getting the mass flow rate we know that the work input or work done during the compression process compression of the, uh, compression of the refrigerant is equal to mr into h2 minus h1 This H two minus H one is the work required to the system per kg. The total work required per minute is M R into H two minus H one. This is the total work required per minute. Two point eight one into these are the one one triple five point four uh, kilojoules per kg minus H one is one thirteen ninety four point one. So after substitution of these values, we will get four fifty three point three kilojoules per minute. That is for every minute. 453.3 kJ of work is given to the system or which is consumed by the compressor now if it is converted into the power we can simply divide it by 60 to convert minute into seconds so power required is equal to 453.3 kJ or divided by 60 that is kJ per second it will be converted into the kJ per second or kilowatts 7.55 kilowatts this is the power required to the system clear yeah. i hope you are understanding this problem the conditions are given in the problem the conditions are very important in the problem the condition one this is before compression is it wet region given after compression that refrigerant will be went to the uh, superheated region and after condensation the refrigerant is subcooled that is the uh, left hand side that is in uh, subcooled region Three and three or four. After expansion, the condition of the refrigerant is in wet region. These conditions are must be uh, identified first of all in the problem. After identifying the state of the refrigerant at each point, you can find the enthalpy at each point by using the data, data given data. Clear? Let us go to the fourth problem and last problem in the subcooled liquid and uh, subcooled cycle. This is under cooling or subcooling cycle. It is the last problem. Then I will go for the improving methods of refrigeration system what are the methods improving the performance of vcr system so a vapor compression refrigeration machine a vapor compression refrigeration machine with r2 well as a refrigerant vcr machine with r2 well as a refrigerant r2 well is the refrigerant number it's a difluoro dichloro methane uh, r2 well as a refrigerant has a capacity of 12 tons of refrigeration in terms of refrigeration the capacity of the system is 12 tr operating between two temperature limits minus 28 and 26 this is the very wide range of operating temperature range minus 28 and 26 degree centigrade the refrigerant is subcooled by 4 degree centigrade before expansion this is the subcooling degree of subcooling is given as 4 degree centigrade and superheated by 5 degree centigrade before leaving the evaporator so after the evaporator the superheated degree of superheated is given as 5 degree centigrade and uh, after condenser the uh, degree of subcooling is 4 degree centigrade the machine has a six cylinders the compressor the machine having the compressor compressor having six cylinder compressor single acting compressor with the stroke is equal to 1.5 2.8 times bore that is the l equal to 1.25 times the diameter that is the d clear it this this uh, data is uh, related to the compressor it has a clearance of 3 percentage of stroke volume that is clearance volume is 3 percentage of the stroke volume that is clearance ratio is given as 3 percentage clearance ratio of the compressor is equal to clearance volume by swept to volume of stroke volume that is 3 percentage determine the power required cop volumetric efficiency bore and stroke of the cylinder so apparently how to find the bore and stroke the speed of the compressor is given as 1000 rpm it is running at a speed of 1000 rpm here yeah, these are the four parameters you have to find in this problem it is a very lengthy problem because the four parameters having uh, different data required 
and the sum of the uh, the last two the two bits that is the third bit and fourth bit is purely related to the compressor topic okay because we are using the compressor in the system that's why you have to uh, remind that is a re uh, rewind that uh, data related to the compressor which are you are already studied in the te1 compressor topics reciprocating compressor so this is a problem and R2L well is the refusal. You have to take the properties of R2L well. first of all. After reading that problem, after getting the problem in the examination, you have to take the properties of R2L well from the data book. Where should the properties? You should take the properties are at minus 28 and 26 degrees centigrade. That is minus 28 and 26 degrees centigrade. This is the evaporating temperature. This is the condensing temperature. Clear? And this cycle involves both the subcooling process and superheating process. And the com combination of uh, two cycles it is. Clear? And let us go for the solution. This is the data table, R2 well data table at minus 28 and 26. Different uh, properties are given. Pressure, saturation pressure at these two temperatures and specific volume of vapors is given at these temperatures and enthalpy entropy values, liquid and vapor enthalpy entropy values. Finally, specific heat of liquid is given as 0.963 and specific heat of superheated vapor as 0.615. Uh, some uh, problems, these are not given in the problem. That is, specific heats are not given in the problem. But if the specific heats are not given in the problem, you have to take these properties from the data book. Clear? For R2L, well, a refrigerant, you have to take these properties, specific heat of vapors. Uh, these specific heat of uh, vapors are available in the data book at page number 113 or 134. In new edition, I think it is 134 in old book, old book uh, second and third edition, it is 113 page. In 113 page, it is available, specific heat of uh, properties are available for every different uh, refrigerants. From that, you have to take the specific heat values. Clear? This is a given data. Uh, capacity is 12 tons given, and the operating temperatures that is the condensing uh, evaporating operating temperature minus 28, and the condensing operating temperature is 26. That is T2 dash at T3 dash or T1 dash here. Uh, this is a degree of subcooling that is change in temp uh, temperature across the condenser during the cooling process below its saturation temperature. T3 dash minus T3 is given as 4 degrees centigrade or T3 is equal to 22 from this. T3, uh, T3 equal to T3 dash minus 4. T3 dash is given as 26. There is a saturation temperature at this point. 26 plus, 26 minus 4 is 22 degrees centigrade. And a degree of superheating before leaving the evaporator, this is the evaporator process. Before leaving the evaporator, it is superheating process. Degree of superheat is T1 minus T1 dash. This is called the degree of superheat. It is given as 5 degrees centigrade or T1 is equal to, it is a saturation temperature, which is equal to the 245 kelvins or 20 minus 28 kelvins, uh, degree centigrade. Therefore, T1 equal to, what is T1 value? T1 equal to 5 plus T1 dash. That is 5 plus minus 28 minus 23. And the data uh, related to the compressor is, stroke to bore ratio is 1.25, 1.25. It is stroke equal to 1.25 to diameter. Clearance volume is 3 percent of the stroke volume. Speed of the compressor is 1000 RPM. And this data is from the data table. That is a V1 dash specific volume at this point. Vapor specific volume at this point is 0.1475. That is at minus 28. Vapor specific volume 0.1475. And V2 dash, this is a specific volume at 2.2 dash point. It is a vapor and uh, vapor specific volume at 298.9 kelvins that is 26 degrees centigrade. Specific volume at 2, two dash is 0 0.0262 meter cube per kg. HF1. <coughs> HF1 is liquid enthalpy at this particular 20 minus 28. Liquid enthalpy is 10.64. HF3 dash is the liquid enthalpy at uh, minus, uh, sorry, 26. 3 dash is at 26. Uh, liquid enthalpy at 26, 60.7, 7 kilojoules per kg, 60.67 kilojoules per kg. And H1 dash, that is a vapor enthalpy at uh, minus 28. Vapor enthalpy is 
175.11. H2 dash is the vapor enthalpy at 298.9. That is the 198.11 vapor enthalpy at 26 degrees centigrade. And S1, SF1, that is SF1 is a liquid entropy at uh, minus 28. Liquid entropy at minus 28 is 0 0.0444. 0.044 value. SF3 is the liquid enthalpy at 298 9 or 26 degree centigrade, 0.2271. Uh, SF1 dash is the vapor entropy at lower temperature is 0.7153. And S2 dash is the vapor entropy at a higher temperature, 26 degree centigrade, 0.6865. Specific two specific heat values are 0.963 is the liquid and 0.615 is per specific heat of vapors. Clear? This is the data given in the problem and data table. This is the TS and pH diagrams. Here, the conditions are given as uh, one is in superheated region. Before compression the or after evaporator, uh, the condition state of the refrigerant is given as in superheated. When we compress the superheated vapor, uh, the compression after compression, the state of the refrigerant is further goes to the a superheated region. The temperature is very inc increases during the compression process. During compression process, the temperature of the uh, refrigerant is increases. Clear? So that means one and two is in superheated regions. So after condensation, after condenser, uh, the refrigerant condition is subcool. That is, the degree of subcool is given uh, in the condenser. So the condition or uh, state of the refrigerant after condenser is in subcool liquid. Uh, from that, it is expanded. The enthalpy remains constant during this process. Clear? The conditions of four conditions are one and two are in superheated regions, three is in subcool region, and four is in wet region. So, to, you have to find the enthalpies at each of these four points. Then only we can find the COP or power required, whatever it is, asked in the problem. So, first bit is theoretical power required. How much power is required? So what is the power required, theoretical power uh, during the process one to H2 minus H1? Mass flow rate of the refrigerant into H2 minus H1. So you have to find the enthalpies at one and two. To find the enthalpies at these two points, you have to find the temperature at these two points. If you know the temperature only, we can find the enthalpies. So that's why we are finding the enthalpies here. First of all, let us find the temperature of superheated vapor at two. Starting from two, we are starting. We know that the entropy at point one is equal to because the temperature at point one, we know the temperature at this point one. By using the temperature, we can find the temperature at point two by equating I entropies S1 equal to S2. So S1, it is in superheated region, S1 dash plus specific heat of vapor into log of T1 by T1 dash. Clear? Uh, specifically, this 0.615 is given for the vapors. S1 dash is the vapor entropy 0 0.7153 at a minus, uh, minus uh, what is minus 28 degree centigrade. Log of T1 minus T1 by T1 dash. T1 is the superheated temperature and T1 dash is the saturation temperature at lower temperature 250 by 245. Uh, S1 value, we will get this one value as 0 0.7277 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Take it as equation one. Then uh, entropy at point two. How to find the entropy at point two? It is also in superheated region. You have to use, use the same equation, similar equation as that of the one. S2 is equal to S2 dash plus specific heat of vapor into log T2 by T2 dash. From this, S2 dash is the vapor ent entropy. Specific heat is given as 0 0.615 here. Log of T2, that is the temperature, unknown temperature. T2 dash is the saturation temperature of condenser, that is 298. Nine. This is a take it as second equation. Clear? Uh, by equating these two equations, because S1 equal to S2, isentropic process, S1 equal to S2. By equating these two, uh, 0 0.7277 equal to 0 0.6865 plus 0 0.615 into log of T2 by 299. So by equating these two, we will get log T2 by 298 9 equal to this value. That value is 0 0.0669. By taking the anti-logs on both sides again, uh, T2 by 299 equal to, we will get 1.069. If we take the analog for this, we will get a e power 0.0669. E power 0.0669 value is 1.069. From this T2 equal to 
299 into 1.069, 1319.6 Kelvins. Sorry, it is 319, I think so, not 13. It is a 319.6 because 299 into 1, uh, we will not get 13, 1300. It is 319.6 Kelvins. Yeah, 319. T2 value. After getting the T2 value, uh, find the enthalpies at two points, H1 and H2. H1, it is in superheated region. H1 dash is the saturation enthalpy plus specific heat into degree of superheated. 175.11, that is the H1 dash enthalpy at one dash plus specific heat of vapors 0.615 into T1 is 250, T1 dash is 245. We will get 178.18 kilojoules per kg. This is the enthalpy at 0.1 because it is in superheated region at this point. H1 is equal to H1 dash enthalpy at this point plus this value, this value of enthalpy. This value of enthalpy is sensible heat, a specific heat into change in temperature. Change in temperature is T1 minus T1 dash. So like that, you have to find the enthalpy at this point. And similar uh, equation for the, uh, at point two, H2 equal to H2 dash plus CPV into T2 minus T2 dash because it is also in superheated region. At this point, enthalpy equal to H2 dash enthalpy up to this point plus this much of heat will be adding to the uh, refrigerant. Then only it will be goes into the superheated. So superheated enthalpy equal to enthalpy at this point plus a specific heat into change in temperature across this uh, process to, 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 to two dash or yeah, to, to T2 minus T2 dash. T2 minus T2 dash. So after substituting, T2 is 319 here, 319.7. It's mistakenly 113, 1300 is there printed. Uh, we will get 210.84 kilojoules per kg. Okay, yeah, 319.6 3, something is there uh, after the point. That's why I'm taking 319.7 here. So after getting the enthalpy at point two, 210.84 kilojoules per kg. Uh, enthalpy of liquid refrigerant at point 3. After getting H1 and H2, you have to find the enthalpy at point 3, this point. How to get the enthalpy at this point? Enthalpy at 3 dash, that is the saturation enthalpy, minus this much of amount is decreasing during the subcooling process. So that minus specific heat of liquid into change in temperature across the subcooling process. So T3 dash minus T3. So H of 3 dash, minus CPL, that is a specific heat of liquid into T3 dash minus T3. We know the saturation temperature and also subcool temperature, 295. A specific heat of liquid is from the data table. Uh, HF3 dash is the saturation liquid enthalpy uh, at uh, 25 degrees centigrade. This is the 25 and 10 degree, 26 degrees centigrade is the condensing temperature. Okay, so 60.67 minus 0.963 into 299 minus 295. We'll get the enthalpy after condenser is 64.52 kilojoules per kg. This is the enthalpy of subcooled liquid. These are the enthalpies of superheated vapors. These two are the superheated vapor enthalpies. After evaporator, this is this is the after compression. Is in, it is this is the uh, enthalpy of subcooled liquid after condenser. So HF3 equal to H4. Enthalpy at 0.4 is equal to also 64.52. So after getting the enthalpies at each point, we can proceed the problem to find the power required. We know that heat extracted or refrigeration effect per kg of refrigerant H1 minus HF3. During this process, uh, 4 to 1 is the evaporation process. H1 minus H4 or H1 minus HF3 because H4 equal to HF3. H1 minus F3, F3 is the, H1 minus HF3 is the critical refrigeration effect per kg. That is 113.66 kilojoules per kg. For every kg of refrigerant, the refrigerant, refrigeration system absorbing 113.66 kilojoules of heat is absorbing. Okay. Uh, refrigeration capa capacity is given in the problem. That is 12 tons of refrigeration. That system can absorb. Uh, 12 tons of refrigeration system, 12 tons of refrigeration, the, the cooling load. Therefore, we can find multiply the 210, then we will get 25.2520 kilojoules per minute. It is given in the problem. Uh, for every minute, the system can absorb 2520 kilojoules of heat can be extracted from the required space to be cooled. Okay, this is the heat extracted per kg. This is the total heat extracted. By equating these two, we will get the mass flow rate.
So mass flow rate of the refrigerant is equal to Q divided by RE. That is MR into RE equal to Q. Mass flow rate into heat extraction per kg is equal to total heat extraction. Therefore, MR equal to Q by RE. 2520 by 113.66. Mass of refrigerant that is R12 will be flowing in the uh, system for every minute is 22.17 kgs. Clear? So after getting the mass flow rate, you can find the work required during the compression process per minute. That is mass flow rate or mass flow rate across the compressor into change in enthalpy across the compressor, H2 minus H1. This is the total amount of work given to the system per every minute. So 22.17 H2 value 210.84 minus 178.18. We will get 724 kilojoules per minute. For every minute, the system consuming 724 kilojoules of work by the compressor. Okay. If it is converted into the seconds, we can write it as power. The rate of work is called the power. Theoretical power required is 724 kilojoules per minute divided by 60 we will get 12.07 kilowatts. Clear? This is the power required to the system in kilowatts. Second bit is COP. We know that COP equal to H1 minus HF3 by H2 minus H1. We all, uh, we all find uh, the, all the parameters. We find all the parameters, that is enthalpies at each point of the cycle. After substitution of all, all the enthalpies, we will get COP as 3.48 is the COP. There is no unit for COP. 3.48 is the COP. Third bit, it is very related to the, very close related to the compressor, compressor topic. It is also as vol volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency means it is actual volume by swept volume. You know that actual volume by swept volume. There is actual volume of uh, refrigerant entering into the compressor. That is a suction volume. Suction volume divided by swept to volume. Let V2, specific volume at point 2 and clearance ratio it is 3 percentage 0 0.03. These two are given in the problem. Uh, first of all, let us find the specific volume at suction to the compressor. That is at point 1. Applying Charles law of 2.1 and 2, 1 dash. What is Charles law? It is a superheated vapor. It is also superheated vapor. So superheated vapor is act like a perfect gas. Superheated vapor is act like a perfect gas or ideal gas. Therefore, uh, between one dash and one, between two dash and two, we can apply the ideal gas equations. Ideal gas equation, one of the ideal gas equation uh, equations is a uh, Charles equation. What is Charles equation? Uh, whenever the pressure remains constant, the constant pressure lines, these two are, Whenever the pressure remains constant, the volume is proportional to the temperature. Yeah. Whenever the temperature increases, whenever the temperature increases from one dash to one, the volume, specific volume is also increases from one dash to one. Therefore, uh, V is proportional to T or V by T equal to constant. Otherwise, V1 by T1 is equal to V1 dash by T1 dash. That is a Charles equation. We can apply at both places because at both places the superheated conditions are there. So I'm applying V1 by T1 equal to V1 dash by T1. This is the Charles law. By applying between one and one dash or V1 equal to V1 dash by T1 dash into T1. So V1 dash is the saturation vapor specific volume at lower temperature that is evaporated temperature is given in the data table 0 0.1475. T1 is the temperature 250, T1 dash is the saturation temperature 245. Then we will get 0 0.1505 meter cube per kg of specific volume uh, entering into the compressor at 0 0.1. This is the specific volume. Similar equation at 0 0.2 and 2 dash between 0 0.2 to 2 and 2 dash V2 by T2 equal to V2 dash by T2 dash. From this, we can get V2 as 0 0.028 meter cube per kg because V2 dash is also given in the problem. It is in a higher temperature specific vapor specific volume. So after getting the specific volumes at each point, 
at uh, suction of the compressor, at delivery of the, of the compressor, uh, we know that the volumetric efficiency, that is the volumetric efficiency is one plus C minus C into V1 by V2. This is already de derived in uh, T1 subject, volumetric efficiency. But this also, uh, this derivation is contained in our RNDC uh, syllabus in third unit. Whenever we uh, uh, studied that the compressor in detail, we can derive this equation. So volumetric efficiency is equal one plus C is the clearance uh, ratio. This is also clearance ratio V1 by V2. So one plus 0.03 minus 0.03 divided by specific volume ratios before and after compression. That is 0 0.1505 divided by 0.028. We will get 0.87 or 87 percentage is volumetric efficiency. It is third bit. It is purely related to the compressor topic. Okay. And last bit is bore and stroke of the cylinder. Bore and stroke of the cylinder. Let D is the bore of the cylinder. That is a bore means diameter. Stroke means length of the piston which is moves in the cylinder. Length of the cylinder is given as 1.25 times the bore and the speed of the compressor 1000 on. By using these two data, we can find the uh, bore and stroke of the cylinder. We know that theoretical suction volume or piston displacement per minute. Piston displacement per minute is equal to actual volume by swept, uh, that is a volumetric efficiency. Already I said in the last uh, problem, a volumetric efficiency is the definition of volumetric efficiency is actual volume by swept volume. This is the basic definition. From this definition only, the previous equation, this equation is, uh, can be derived. This equation can be derived. So actual volume by swept volume. Here, uh, swept volume, piston displacement volume, it is also called swept volume, is equal to actual volume by volumetric efficiency. Here, yeah? So swept volume, piston displacement volume is equal to this equation. MR into V1, that is the actual volume, that is mass of refrigerant into specific volume is the represents the actual volume flow rate uh, divided by volumetric efficiency. So this is the piston displacement volume will get 3.84 meter cube per minute. This is a swept volume of the compressor. Clear? Yeah. Uh, but since the machine has six cylinder, single acting compressor, therefore theoretical suction volume or piston displacement volume per cylinder is the total piston displacement volume of six cylinders. For every cylinder having the swept volume, piston displacement volume flow rate is 0.64 meter cube per minute. 3.84 divided by number of cylinders. So for every cylinder, the piston is swept by 0.64 meter cube per minute. This is the each cylinder swept volume. This is the total cylinder, six cylinders calculated the swept volume because mass flow rate, uh, this much amount of substitution, not a mass flow rate, all the six cylinders will flow out. All the six cylinders will flow a mass flow rate substitution, not do, we will get the total volume flow rate. To get the volume flow rate that is a swept to volume, that is swept to volume for each cylinder, then divided by that 3.84 by six cylinders, we will get the swept to volume for each cylinder. Clear? We know that the suction volume or piston displacement volume per minute. Okay, minute piston displacement, okay, piston displacement volume in that piston area into stroke into RPM, speed of the compress. That is pi by four d square L, P pi by four d square is the area, Stroke is the L and speed is the L. It is for one cylinder. Clear? It is one for one cylinder. Otherwise, we can equate this 3.84 is equal to pi by 4 d square L into N into number of cylinders is 6. You have to multiply 6 here. If you are not divide at this place, you have to multiply 6 here. Clear? The total piston displacement volume of chest into 6 is there. Otherwise, into 6 eight, but only one cylinder piston displacement volume we will get. Pi by 4 d square into L value is 1.25 times the bore is given in the data and speed of the compressor is 1000 R. We will get 982 d cube, that is a, a diameter cube, meter cube per minute. This is the piston displacement volume for one cylinder. This is the piston displacement volume for one cylinder. So therefore, by equating three and four equations, both are piston displacement volume for one cylinder. By equating the both equation three and four, you will get 
D cube is equal to 0 0.64 by 982, 0.00652 D cube value. Therefore, D value is 0 0.0867 meters or 86.7 mm. This is the diameter of the one cylinder. Diameter of the one cylinder, compressor cylinder. And stroke length for one cylinder is 1.25 times the bore, 1.25 to 86.7. We will get 108.4 millimeters. These are the stroke and bore values for single cylinder. For one oka cylinder ki idi. And every each cylinder having this stroke and bore. Uh, six cylinders kuda, same stroke and bore. Unta. Okay. Like this, you have to find the stroke and bore dimensions of the cylinder. Uh, and uh, volumetric efficiency, COP, and theoretical power required. These are the parameters which are calculated in this problem. Okay, I'm closing this problem. I'm closing this class at this point. Uh, we completed all the problems related to the, all the all types of uh, refrigeration cycles, VCR cycles. Clear? Uh, next class, I want to uh, explain the how to improve the methods. What are how to what are the methods to improve the performance? of VCR system. Clear? I'm closing this class. Have a nice day. Bye.